Welcome back, Blade fans. OG Blade Reviews back with you once again. We've got Kunwu on the table again. Let's get rid of the, some of those reflections. It's a silver box with the embossed gold Kunwu. And uh, here we have uh, a descriptor of what's inside. I never got the uh, Django. So I have my third Kunwu here. And I never did get the irregular size a Django. This is the Django XL. And I was waiting for something like that to show up. I got to thank uh, Mike Emler, Crazy Sharp. I saw his review on the XL. I got a little different version. But let me at least share with you all the goodies they put in the box. I got this crazy uh, samurai... Uh, a horse. And we've got that. Authenticity. Interestingly, with this one and not on my other two, you get a wire clip option with the two spare Omega Springs inside. You get, if this is boring to you, I'll be speeding through it quickly. Kunwu microfiber cloth. A Kung Kunwu Dragon sticker. A Kunwu, <laughs> I know, pouch that's actually uh, kind of felt lined. Nice job on the pouch, canvas pouch. Finally, we get to the knife, right? Let's zoom in just a little bit here. So, uh, nice box and presentation and goodies, but... Here's what really counts, right? This is the Kunwu Django XL. And the version that you see here is all stonewashed. Stonewashed LMAX blade, stonewashed uh, frag pattern handle. And uh, you can get these in at least a couple other versions. You get a black blade, you get a satin blade you get a uh, more of a satin ish sort of handle but uh, i wanted this to be a user haven't used it much yet because I, it just came in a few days ago actually it was waiting for me when i returned from vacation which was kind of a cool thing and uh this was my purchase i thank uh, justin up at white mountain knives uh, for his usual fantastic service no tax, free shipping, etc. So what we've got here is what I'd have to call a buoy style blade, Bowie or buoy, your preference of pronunciation, named after good old Jim Bowie. I am not calling this a buoy knife, okay? So uh, those of you that like to chime in and correct me, I'm simply saying it's got a buoy blade influence because of the shape of the blade and that hooked top point on line, really nice uh, finger choil. So you want to choke up, you can. You can get it way up there, but it is a full size knife. You can see the size of that handle with its lanyard hole. And uh, what do we got? One body screw, two body screws and a titanium clip. So what's interesting is uh, I showed you that wire clip. That's the provision, those two slots for it to be attached. Special provisions for wire clips when they're used. If I were to remove the titanium clip from this side, you would see the same thing underneath. So that's a nice option. You have a deep carry wire clip or you have a titanium clip that's pretty stiff, pretty stiff. I love this size knife. Uh, we're talking about, I think, 3.7-ish inches. And uh, while I'm saying that, why don't we get some full measurements on this knife? Almost 9 inches. We're going to call that 8.9 inches. And I uh, should have told you the blade length, but you're probably looking at it. 
Um, so I was saying three seven. It's actually three seven five. So three and three quarter inches on this baby. Other dimensions and in millimeters, three millimeters exactly in inches. 0.12 and handle 0.52. That's some really nice dimensions. Fairly thin handle, fairly thin blade stock, which is going to equate to a very nice high flat grind on the edge. And I didn't turn the scale on because I'm too busy talking. See if we can boost up some light here for you just a bit. And we've got a 6.22 ounce knife. It's not a lightweight. We'll need to find out if there's any weight relieving on the inside. And I believe there is actually. Let's see. Fishing for the flashlight. So there we have... Some nice pockets milled out on the inside. So there is weight relieving even with the fairly heavy 6.22 ounces. Let's get this out of the way. And um, what do we got here for an edge? Let's find out. Got a couple pieces of paper here. I don't want to cut two. I just want to cut one. So... Whoa. Yeah, I mean, one thing Mike mentioned in his review is Quinwu puts a really fantastic working edge on their blades. That is really remarkable. Sharp, bitey, and smooth at the same time. Out of the way, you paper. Okay. So as I was mentioning, nice stonewash finish. Nice stone wash on the titanium. We have some very nice chamfering here on an otherwise flat handle with the frag pattern there. Um, they run the frag pattern on both sides. So we've got uh, maybe a chance of some drag on that clip. I'm really not sure. And uh, We've got a nice backspacer that integrates so well that it almost looks uh, as though it's uh, kind of a unibody there, integral, but it isn't. And you can see that all the way around to the pommel. Yeah, it's about half inch sticking out of your pocket there. That's not bad for a titanium clip. It settles very nicely into the hand. Let me see if I can back out just a little here. I mean, it's... Um, these are amongst my favorite brands, I'm going to have to say. I mean, I've got a lot of favorite brands out there, but recently, this past uh, six months or so, and picking up uh, Kunwu knives, I've got to say, they're industrial feeling. They're great in the hand. They're extremely well built. This uh, axis style lock, bar lock, they're using these uh, tabs that pull back rather than just a stud that you see on Benchmade and some others that are doing the axis lock. They really thought this out. So when you pull back on these, you've actually got some grip. So very easily opened and closed. Very nice there. I'm going to make a little adjustment here to the lighting. No other direction. There we go. I'm going to brighten things up just a little bit. Not sure how it's coming across on your end, but uh, through the viewfinder here, I needed a little more light. So there we are. Great job on that LMAX. And uh, their LMAX, I believe, is up around 61 at least, maybe 62. I'm not certain. Not listed, but I did hear from some other folks who have... Uh, including LTK, who may have uh, sent his out for testing. As I said, this was my own purchase, brandy new from White Mountain. And uh, why don't we do this? 
here are my other two Kunwus in order of purchase. This is the Ex Padre, also a Barlock style knife. They do make the Ex Padre and some other of their blades, including, I think, the original Django in a, um, a frame lock if you don't like the bar lock. And I happen to like bar locks. I think that they're uh, really sturdy, really secure. Here is the big one of the bunch, the Pulsar XL. So in order of size, they really would go this way. And there's the satin finish. You can already see a fingerprint on there, but that's the satin finish with the orange peel finish. So if you're considering what finish to get, because these knives come in multiple uh, variants with different handle and blade finishes, this is the orange peel, just a little bit of a texture, but it's, you can feel it when you rub your thumb across it, but it's basically smooth. But that would be the largest the Pulsar XL. Come in a little closer. And uh, here is the Django XL. Again, I don't have the original Django, but uh, I may have misspoken. I'm looking at these, and this Django XL is longer overall. And uh, is the blade the same? It's the blade's actually shorter, so we got more handle on the Django. The Pulsar, interestingly enough, has a better blade to handle ratio if you are considering a longer blade and a shorter handle. And here is the Ex Padre. And uh, yeah, that is a little shorter than both of them, considerably shorter than the Pulsar um, and slightly shorter than the Django. But if you look at just the handles, this is the shortest handle on the longest knife. Well, not the longest overall, but the longest blade. Um, pretty much all coming in in the same general size range. Large, okay? You got plenty to hold on to here with the Expadre. Got close to an inch left over. You've got the choil on this one as well where you can choke up. This is a nice little blade uh, profile on this guy with this little uh, almost uh, hooking sort of clip slightly like a Bowie with a big deep belly on that one and a high grind. They are all very slicey. Trust me. They come through just wicked sharp, smooth edge with bite. I like that. So we've got some micro serrations there, but um, believe me, a little bit of a draw on your finger that will cut. As Doug Markaita likes to say, it will cut, it will kill. Same sort of window opening on the blade for opening it on both the uh, Pulsar and the Django. And a slightly different shape on the uh, Ex Padre. We have kind of, a, kind of a fuller sort of thing going on here where they milled out some of it, but uh, left the whole slightly different shape. These two, however, very much the same as far as that opening window goes. If we were to compare this Django XL to today's carry, here is the LTK result collaboration between he and uh, Max to Chuck. And uh, this is about an inch longer overall than this one. This is kind of a medium sized knife, three and a half inch blade, really excellent button lock. That is, uh, I would call it a safe button lock in that it will not accidentally close. And it just happens to be today's carry. If we were to compare this to the Oh man, bad brain day. Comparing it to the rat one, and I had the rat one out of frame because <laughs> I'm still getting used to my new setup here. If we were to compare the uh, Django XL to the 
Rat 1, we've got the same length knife, strangely enough. And we've got a blade that's pretty much the same too. Taller handle, taller, way taller blade on the, uh, the Django XL. But otherwise, same length. So if you've got a Rat 1, same length knife. Who knew? I do like the fact that they give you a full-size choil to choke up, and there isn't much danger of nicking your finger. But when I do, look at how much handle I got left over. Wow. So you've got quite the choice here. And uh, you've got some excellent jimping, if I didn't mention it, right over that uh, opening window there. And uh, the uh, action, you got to pull back pretty well on those uh, tabs on the bar lock, uh, there's plenty of spring pressure there. I can roll it open very smoothly. It is on bearings with the uh, thumb. I can middle finger flick it very easily with the middle finger. Um, I can pull back and flick it open by releasing the bar lock. So all three ways work extremely well. And the so-called detent, I would call it uh, for a bar lock, quite nice. You don't have a true detent as you do on a liner lock or on a frame lock, but it is held in very well. There is no blade lash here whatsoever. When it's open, it is just absolutely rock solid. A beautiful knife, a beautiful working knife. And I will leave you links to White Mountain if you're interested in picking one of these up or either of the other two that you saw. You can get 10% off if you use my discount code OG-Blade. That will be in the comments. Or my older one, Old Sword. 10% off of whatever you order. And uh, if you use it, I get some creds. So uh, I would definitely appreciate that. Will you all be well? Don't forget to give this vid a like and subscribe. You'll see my logo right over here. Click on that logo and you can subscribe to the channel. You'll be notified every time there is a new video that comes out or other incredible event. <laughs> take care. Take care and be safe.